Thank you for joining and welcome to Paytm's earnings call to discuss financial results for the quarter ended and financially ended 31st of March 2024. From Paytm's management, we have with us today Mr. Vijay Shekhar Sharma, founder and CEO, Mr. Madhur Devra, President and Group CFO, Mr. Anuj Mittal, Senior Vice President, Investor Relations. A few standard announcements before we begin. This call is for existing shareholders of Paytm and potential investors and research analysts. This call is not meant for the media. If any media representative are on this call, request you to kindly drop off at this point. The information to be presented and discussed here should not be recorded, reproduced, or redistributed in any manner. Some statements made today may be forward-looking in nature. Actual events may differ materially from those anticipated in such forward-looking statements. Finally, this call is scheduled for 60 minutes. It will have a presentation by the management followed by a Q&A. Uh, with this, we'll start the call. Uh, I request Mr. Vijay Shekhar Sharma to kindly initiate the call. Over to you, Vijay. Thank you, Pranav. Hello, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in this quarter's earning call. As you are aware, uh, last three months have been uh, quite a roller coaster in the journey of PTM. We learned a lot of our lessons. We learned how to become better and resilient. We also resolved ourselves to be fully compliant according to regulators' expectation and letter and spirit. And I'm very happy to see that our results are indicating that. Expectedly, the February and March month were very, very um, uncomfortably bad. At the same point of time, they were filled with lots of lessons for long-term sustainability and growth of the company. In fact, I'm very happy to tell, you might have read the earning release that sort of our worst is behind us in terms of consumer and merchants and few line items of businesses that we, first of all, were proactively able to uh, stop or pause or sort of reduce, we now have started to come back to those line items of businesses and started to build a large revenue and profit centric company in long term. Many of our teammates in these days have been going through the test of the time, lessons and learning of life where they have learned what we needed to do and what we have been able to do. In fact, I can say that as PTMR, I couldn't be more proud of each of our teammates' commitment. In this quarter, we have two months of impact of the business. Still, we have the performance at annual level, which is better than last year, and we remain committed to grow sustainability with focus on profits, with focus on the core of the business, which is payment business and cross-selling of financial services business. Overall, it is important to note that as PTM, we were committed to build India's financial in and contribute towards in our country's financial inclusion. We'll remain aligned to our regulators and our governments mission to digitize and formalize formal financial economy. With this, I give my teammate Madhur this uh, slide. Then we will talk about a few Q&As and way forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vijay. And uh, welcome, everyone. And thank you for joining our earnings call. Uh, just to hit on a few uh, key points and then uh, spend enough time on Q&A. Uh, for the full year results, um, we achieved the uh, first year, first full year of EBITDA profitability uh, since IPO at 559 crores. Our revenue was close to 10,000 crores with growth across the three businesses on a year-on-year basis. Our contribution profit was 5,500 crores and at 56%. And like we said, EBITDA, uh, including UPI incentive, was 559 crores, a margin of 6%. Um, so all of this is evidence to say that we have significant momentum all through the year and we are outperforming every 
metric from the previous year and frankly some of our uh, internal um, estimates as well. Uh, obviously, we, uh, as Vijay mentioned, uh, starting February and March, we started to see uh, impact on our business. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, for the quarter, we did see a revenue drop uh, of uh, to, uh, to 2,267 crores. Uh, this was uh, a decline on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, normally, there is some festive impact, but obviously most of this impact, vast majority of it rather, was due to uh, the, uh, the transitions that we needed to do uh, starting February 1. Our contribution profit also declined 1288 crores, flattish on last year, including UPI incentive and 57% uh, margin. Our EBITDA before we saw was 103 crores. As we mentioned earlier, we got 288 crores of UPI incentive, which is over a 50% growth from previous year, including some UPI incentive that we get from our new partner banks. Can we go to the next slide, please? A uh, little bit of a deep dive on our business. Um, our merch Apologies. Um, deep, dive on, deep dive on our business. Um, our merchant business has uh, started to grow uh, in April and May. Our MTUs have uh, stabilized uh, in the month of May. Um, our MTU is down 24% as compared to January. Um, April was the worst, and May has now started to stabilize, at least on a daily transacting user basis, and uh, we uh, expect this to stay stable. Uh, our MTU growth will, will uh, come only when we get the new TPAP user onboarding uh, commencement uh, from NPCI. Uh, on the devices side, uh, we have started acquisition of new merchants and are focusing on activation of inactive merchants. As, as you would imagine, during February and March, we did see a reduction in our active merchant base uh, as we were pending migration to our partner banks. Uh, so the active base declined by 10 lakhs, so roughly about 10. 10% of our overall merchants uh, did become inactive. Uh, this was due to high attrition in February and March, and also because we were not doing new merchant addition, which normally would offset at least the regular attrition as well as uh, show increase in numbers. Um, we remain very, very committed to the uh, subscription device, uh, device merchants and that business. Uh, we continue to innovate and launch newer devices with improved features. A couple of them were on the cover of this presentation. Uh, on our payments, GMB, we have slightly better news to report. Um, the, the business has come off its worst. Uh, we did uh, have about 12% impact. 12% uh, of our GMB was coming from businesses which are currently discontinued uh, or disrupted. Uh, this also includes the services that we were distributing for Paytm Payments Bank, such as Wallet and Paytm pay Payments Bank Net Banking, but also other places where we are taking a prudent view. Um, Excluding that, we are uh, down 6% compared to January, and we're about 3 to 4% higher uh, than the March lows. Uh, so we do expect this to continue to show uptick from here on. Can we go to the next page, please? On payment services, in terms of a little bit of outlook, uh, just to calibrate everyone, the business now becomes primarily about focusing on UPI, which is 80 to 85% of our GMP. Uh, card processing and EMI payments processing. So consumers are effectively in India paying merchants using these three instruments. And of course, as you know, uh, we have customers on our app as well as merchants for whom we provide uh, payment processing services. Our GMB um, was down a little bit, like we mentioned earlier, uh, up uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, merchant subscription, uh, this is a device space. Our net payment margin is impacted, so 748 crores, excluding UPI incentive, became 565 crores, and 853 crores, uh, including UPI incentive. Um, as, I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the business is about UPI, debit and credit cards, and EMI. Um, I just want to remind everyone on the business model. So for bank-to-bank -bank UPI merchant payments, we don't earn an MDR from the merchant, but we do receive subventions of the government, which is the 200 which is the UPI incentive that we talked about. Uh, there are other instruments where we earn uh, MDR from merchants, uh, including certain UP, uh, uh, instruments that work on the UPI rails, such as UPI credit card, credit overdraft, and so on. And I'm sure there'll be more innovation going forward, as well as debit and credit card processing and EMI aggregation. So that's, that's where we earn, earn a higher payment processing margin. 
and obviously on UPI we earn, uh, bank to bank UPI we earn subvention from the government. Um, our outlook on payment processing margin is expected to be five to six basis points, including UPI incentive. We have uh, elaborated on this in the earnings release, uh, that just the way the quarterly numbers work, we expect this to be in the three to three and a half basis points range on a quarterly basis, and including UPI incentive um, to be five to six basis points. And uh, the last two years pattern is that UPI incentive comes towards the end of the financial year, usually in the fourth quarter. I've already talked about merchant deactivation uh, or um, inactive, uh, inactive base, uh, which we are focusing on reactivating and also adding new merchants as well. Due to this re uh, uh, certain number of merchants going inactive, our subscription per device on an overall deployed basis, the 107 lakh number that we shared, um, has gone down. Uh, we expect that to, uh, to now go up. Uh, obviously, this always remains subject to market forces and competitive dynamics. Um, we expect net additions in terms of device uh, merchants uh, to come back to past trend lines by Q3. Next page, please. On financial services, uh, as we have mentioned starting in December, uh, on personal loan side, uh, vast majority of our focus has shifted to distribution that model uh, for personal loans. Uh, this is a new opportunity that we saw uh, where we have scaled up um, a business where for lenders we do distribution only uh, and lenders uh, are responsible for collections. We do not provide collection services on this. Uh, this combined with the fact that we are extremely cautious um, on personal loan with collections uh, means that vast majority of our business right now and going forward, uh, uh, at least in the near future, is expected to come from distribution only model uh, for uh, personal loans. Um, our take rate uh, overall has gone up a little bit, as we had mentioned earlier, that postpaid have slightly lower uh, take rates. Uh, so when uh, well, with, with the mix changing more and more towards personal loan and merchant loan, our overall take rates have gone up a little bit. Uh, given that we are going to focus on distribution only loans, and at least at this point, the credit cycle be really selective on focusing on prime and, and super prime customers. Uh, there might be a slight compression in our take rates, and we are overall saying we should settle this at 3 to 3.5%. Uh, we are uh, expanding our focus into insurance broking, as we had mentioned over the last couple of quarters. Uh, this is focused on being extremely product-led, so embedded insurance and DIY products. So vast majority of our effort goes into building the best-in-class DIY products for our consumers. Um, on equity broking, two separate pieces of business. One is uh, to have a great platform for equity trading uh, and FNO trading, uh, which is Paytm money. We're also expanding distribution of mutual funds uh, where we see uh, strong tailwinds uh, in terms of uh, participation in the equity markets by, uh, by retail investors. Here are key focuses on SIPs. Uh, where we think we can expand uh, the inclusion, financial inclusion towards wealth management products. Can we go to the next page, please? So just to double-click on that a little bit, on the consumer loans, uh, we are expanding on different types of distribution-only loans, where we earn only distribution fees, and we have paused small personal loans and postpaid loans, as we had mentioned earlier, and we are held, where we were helping partners uh, with collections to earn distribution and collection bonus. On merchant loan, our continu continued focus remains on merchant loans where we do with collections. So these are existing payment merchants of Paytm who are receiving lots of money using Paytm every day. Uh, so that remains the core focus. Uh, we are starting to see some opportunities and starting to do some pilots on different types of other business loans. These are, for example, larger ticket loans where we're only doing distribution. Um, so that's uh, another part of the business. Um, as you can see on the right-hand side, we have given you monthly data, uh, just so that you can see what the trend lines of the business have been uh, during this period of transition in February, March, and April. Uh, so in January, we had done 3,300 crores of uh, total dispersals. Uh, 720 crores of that was postpaid. Like I mentioned, that is paused. Uh, 1393 of personal loans included both models, uh, distribution only and distribution plus collection. Going feb in February, March, and April, all of these numbers are on distribution only model. And in merchant loan, we had done about 1,100 crores, broadly paused that in February, and now we're starting to see uh, significant uh, scale up in that. 
uh, close to back to previous levels. Can we go to the next page, please? Uh, marketing services. Uh, this is a high margin business for us, uh, which is upsell on our payments consumer base. Uh, for uh, and this consists of travel, advertising, and credit cards. Largely, um, travel and advertising revenues have been impacted uh, due to lower MTUs during this period compared to the previous period. As we uh, see stabilization and growth in our customer base, uh, we should see this business scale up again. Can we go to the next page, please? Uh, we also wanted to share some of the financial impact. So we have broadly broken it up into three buckets. Um, the big picture is that um, last quarter, there were obviously a bunch of moving parts, um, and some of them affected us earlier in the quarter, and some of them affected us later in the quarter. So the full EBITDA impact, effectively the full quarter impact, will only be felt in Q1, and we do start to expect meaningful recovery from that in Q2, because we mentioned a number of things uh, are temporary and we can restart. So to begin with, uh, the first is, as we had mentioned, uh, I think it was January 31st or February 1st, um, then on account of embargo on the PPBL products, particularly uh, inability for customers to add money to wallet, wallet and PPBL bank accounts, uh, there is an EBITDA impact to Paytm as a distributor of those services and for other services that we provided to PPBL of about 500 crores on an annual basis. We had given a range of 300 to 500. We think we're going to be at the higher end of that range, unfortunately. Uh, so most of this impact will start from Q1, because for vast majority of Q4, we were offering these services, although on slightly smaller scale, uh, but the volumes were more or less intact. The second impact is, um, like we mentioned, our MGUs have gone down and our, a number of active merchants have gone down. Because of this, in Q1, we expect incremental EBITDA impact of 100 to 150 crores as we get more consumers and more merchants on the platform, we should see recovery uh, from uh, this EBITDA impact. Um, we also mentioned um, uh, that we have, uh, in line with certain prudent measures that we have taken, and in line, or in line with uh, as, during this period of transition, and in line with reg certain regulatory guidances, we have uh, uh, paused certain businesses in Q4. Uh, the full quarter EBITDA impact of that would be an incremental 75 to 100 crores according to our estimates. And uh, again, here we expect there to be recovery starting in Q2. So overall, uh, we expect Q1 uh, to be, like I said, the full quarter impact of this. Uh, if you add up all of these incremental impacts, um, then we come currently we're doing about 180 crores of EBIT, negative EBITDA. Uh, before UPI incentive, and also we're not expecting UPI incentive in Q1. Hence, uh, we, if we add up all of this impact, we expect Q1 to be five to 600 crores. This includes investment in marketing. In February and March of last, uh, last quarter, uh, we effectively paused most uh, user growth marketing. Uh, we have restarted that. Uh, so if you include that impact as well, we expect five to 600 crores. And we're confident of meaningful improvement from this number uh, in Q2 and onwards, and the reason for that is that certain products which have been paused, uh, they have some have already restarted, some we expect to restart very soon, um, and uh, we are also achieving steady growth in oper operating metrics. Um, we have put a bunch of commentary in the earnings release about how we're looking at cost. Uh, there is opportunity for us to uh, create a much leaner organization structure uh, in line with the um, you know, some of the revenue and profitability impact that we have had. We're very conscious about the fact that we need to relook at every cost. Our largest indirect cost is, of course, people cost, and we're expecting annualized people cost savings of four to 500 crores uh, going forward. Can we go to the next page, please? I'll turn it back to Vijay to talk about our focus areas going forward. As I said, our attention to governance compliance remains prime attention in next few quarters. So you expect us to do more independent board members and subject matter experts on our subsidiaries and associates and on parent board. And you also expect us to drive lots of internal overhaul or reviewing the workflow processes that we are looking at. Important to note that we are committed to our payments business as core payment business, driving 
on recovering on consumer and merchant base that's 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 an important thing that's our core moat we will continue to invest in sales team or marketing to drive our new market share or customer count or both merchant and consumer side and the cross selling wise we are very clear we've seen it it works the cross sell is using financial services distribution model obviously we have seen how we have pivoted on our loan business from collection centric approach to a distribution only while on merchant side the distribution plus collection works out great so we'll continue to expand on that and disbursements of insurance and equity mutual fund products it is important to know that we are looking at our cost structures or the business line items so that we can prune our non core assets and we can create a leaner organization focused on profitability thank you active those um yeah we can open it up to questions thank you question uh, will take from alok sivasa of us alok you may please go ahead sorry could you hear me hello Yes, no, Alok, you are not audible. Can you please? Oh, sorry, you. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, so I was asking, what is the what is the view on uh, marketing services business? Because uh, in the earnings release as well as your comments uh, on the call, there is no mention on the marketing services business, and there is also a mention of pruning of non-core businesses. So, so I just want to understand that going forward, what is going to happen on that business? Because you have been mentioning payment as core and distribution of uh, or cross sell of financial products oh hello the key reason that we did not mention much about was that we saw lesser consumer base and that is why our growth or the numbers were flattish as far as the marketing services to merchant is concerned that remains our fortifying or sort of solidifying relationship with merchant and that continues as a focus we have done good job of integrating creating merchant opportunities where uh, uh you know we offer advertising we offer marketing we offer like you know the apis led structure where we have consumer ticket booking travel etc so the intention of this messaging was that we are not losing focus and sight from our core which is payment cross sell financial services marketing services we more or less see as a support to the payment business is the reason that we didn't mention much but you could see that numbers are good there they are more or less not dropped significantly okay fair so what exactly is non core vijay when when you are say, saying pruning of non core businesses so internally we were running many projects including let's say cross borders and we don't need to do that now we were running lot of products which were useful for uh, various bank partners like a software service to banks etc so we are trying to find out whether those businesses were if you notice our cost structure of overall engineering and technology people etc have been a larger than what a pure payment company would have had so these are those kind of line items okay got it uh, the second one is uh, what what uh, do you have any update on the uh, payment aggregator license that you haven't got so far and do you see any risk that your existing customer base that you have that could also be impacted at some point in time can rbi say that government has not given an approval and we have reached a point where you know the existing customers also you will have to give up do you have any update on that and also if you could uh, let us know if over the last 3 months you have lost any of the big online uh, you know payments uh, customer uh, so first of all the rbi has a variable approval sort of that inform us in 15 days of getting feedback from government so there is no delta of that how long it is or not in more or less so we don't foresee as that as a risk there as of the approval it is interministerial committee meetings 
I think it was due or will be due once the government gets formed. I, I can't say much comment about when will it be done or so on. So that is why we are in waiting state. As for uh, losing any online merchant, no, we did not lose any. We have actually focused on deepening relationship by farming relationship. So we, so practically speaking, I can share that our revenues from online merchants have grown on a product to product basis. Obviously, our revenues included uh, other payment instruments like postpaid, etc., that we would used to have, which we have paused. So uh, that part of revenue, if we don't account for, then like to like basis, our revenues from our online merchants have increased. Okay, fair. I, ju I just have one more on on your uh, guidance of uh, uh, Madhur three to three and a half basis point uh, NPM uh, X of UPI incentives. Your UPI incentive roughly was one and a half basis point in FI twenty four, and uh, when you look at government allocation to UPI incentive, that number is growing at a slower pace versus the growth of uh, overall UPI P two M GMV. So incrementally in a in a in FI twenty five when you are likely to lose market share. Means I am finding it difficult to understand how you will get two per two basis point when this year you did one and a half. So shouldn't means unless I'm missing something, shouldn't it be more like a four to five basis point kind of a guidance for for uh, you know uh, NPM? Yeah, sorry. So I um uh just a couple of clarifications. I think um, the incentive scheme uh, this year was very, very similar to the incentive scheme last year in terms of how they think about industry and non-industry teams, groups of merchants, and what the uh, what the uh, incentives were uh, to the acquiring banks. Uh, so it was very similar. Uh, as you saw, we uh, got a number which was slightly more than 50% more than the previous year. Uh, so that's the first point. Second is on acquiring GMV. Uh, of course, we have not seen a few months of growth, but it's more or less back to, especially UPI acquiring is more or less back, in fact, probably about flat to uh, January. So yes, we haven't had the growth that we would have otherwise had from January to April, uh, but our acquiring numbers, including on UPI, is very strong. The third is uh, purely, a look, um, UPI was previously 70% of our GMB, and now it is going to be 80 to 85% of our GMB. So that has a little bit of a blending impact as well. And finally, while overall our UPI incentive sharing with partners is uh, similar to what we had with Paytm Payments Bank, there are some small uh, nuance uh, differences. Uh, and the final point is we Paytm is now a TPAP, uh, so there's a small amount of money that the TPAP gets which we will also get going forward. I think, okay. uh, uh, Alok, overall, I also want to tell you that UPI is headed towards MDR, if you notice the indication of different, different payment instruments that have come on UPI. For example, like rupee on UPI plus 2,000 rupees payment, meaning upward of 2,000 rupees payment is MDR charged to the merchant. Credit on UPI also is very clearly out there with the charging to the merchant. And then uh, prepaid on UPI is also charging towards merchant. And if you notice, uh, regulator has brought three different buckets of uh, merchants, small merchant, mid-sized merchant, large-sized merchant. In my opinion, the uh, while the government incentive are, like you said, that may not be growing in the same ratio as UPI is growing, but at the same point in time, the percentage growth of UPI in itself is not very, very large as a volume, but on other instruments, which are MDR worthy. So we don't see that there is a reason for it not to be in the five pips range. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All the best. Yeah. And a look, of course, this is all basics that next year's UPI circular uh, will be very similar to last year's, like last year was very similar to the year before. Uh, so this is a little bit of crystal balling, but... Uh, uh, yeah. But uh, that the UPI incentive assumption is based on the same. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I request all the participants to limit their questions to two per participant. Uh, we'll take next question from Sachin Salgaonkar of Bank of America. Uh, Sachin, you may please go ahead.
Yeah. Yeah. Now you are allowed to comment. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for unmuting me. Uh, uh, first of all, Madhur Vijay, thank you for sharing incremental outlook pointers and data points on recent trends. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, my first question is on loans. Uh, I thought one of the advantages value add what PTM historically had was uh, the collections given your strong data analytics. Uh, now going ahead, uh, this entire distribution only loans, is this something which is temporary or we could see a change? Uh, and a related question is just wanted to understand how your partners are thinking because I do understand none of your partners have left you, but most appear to be in a wait and watch mode. Sachin, I believe that uh, we took a call based on the overall market macro where the credit disbursements were clearly under stress when it came to personal loans. If you notice, the, we have looked at small personal loans, and BNPL specifically is a very small personal loan out there, and our personal loan ticket size were also very small. So we have taken a call that till the time period market comes back, we will not do collection incentive-less lead volume in that side. While on the merchant side, as you know, we have a very clear uh, way to help lender collect, so we continue to do it. So as you are understanding, based on these, that it is a temporary till the time period market comes back, where the collection activity by our platform can generate collection bonus. If we are not going to generate collection bonus, we are not going to do it. That is what our approach is. And this adds an opportunity for us to experiment and bring a few more type of credit disbursement and also hedge. So as they say there is an opportunity in adversity, we looked at it as expansion of other kind of credit, and we see very good approach there. And it has given us opportunity to partner with few banks also, actually, surprisingly. Right. And your thoughts on merchants? Um, you know, we, yeah, merchant. We continue to do the collection centric. Got it. Uh, and Vijay, you know, obviously in opening remarks, you guys did mention you're piloting on other side of loans. Uh, we did see gold loans on your, uh, you know, app. So any such categories we should uh, think about? And you know, how big is this opportunity for you guys? Uh, so I think we are looking at micro lab as of now, and. Uh, I, we believe that uh, we did try gold. So we are trying secure credit also as a part of our experiments. And because it is not material, so we have not mentioned much in the numbers yet. But at the same time, I want to tell you that's a secure credit. It's, it's more about monetizing the traffic. So we were wondering whether it does make sense or not sense. But at the same point of time, we are integrating for a couple of secure credit lines, especially for our small merchants. Microlab makes a lot of sense. Got it. And last question from me is, you know, uh, your use of cash, clearly you have a good amount of cash on your balance sheet. Uh, basis your guidance and where things are, one, one gets a sense that, uh, you know, the worst is over per se for uh, you. Uh, so again, from that perspective, wanted to understand, should we see uh, a, uh, some kind of a buyback to help the stock or could we see further heavy investments in marketing as you focus in terms of acquiring uh, more users and merchants? Sachin, I do not mind telling you that, like I so told you, that we will invest in customer acquisition for sure, because that is the first right of our business. At the same point in time, wider use, I will ask Madhur to comment on that. Yeah. So, um, uh, Sachin, uh, we do have excess cash. There's no doubt about that. We have about 8,300 crores, excluding the and other customer funds. Um, while we have mentioned that next year, will the next quarter will be the down negative. Uh, we will get back uh, very quickly on the path back to profitability. I think over the last quarter, the most important thing for us to do was to finish these transitions uh, and also to unpause some of the things that we had paused temporarily. Um, and uh, and the important thing was also for us to make sure that we take this opportunity. Uh, to make sure that the, uh, our, our investors and analysts uh, who have been effectively waiting for a full update uh, since uh, the embargo uh, on Paytm Payments Bank uh, have that full information symmetry with us or as much information asymmetry as we can have. Uh, now that we have done that, uh, I do expect to go back to the board and discuss how much excess cash we have and what is the best use of that cash. Um, even with the point that Vijay mentioned is that we uh, do have to invest in marketing, which we have mentioned. 
um, and uh, we um, have to focus on getting back to profitability. Um, but yes, in that journey, uh, we do have significant amount of excess cash. And it is logical for us that unless we're going to spend that cash, we should be just having discussions with our board about how best to return that cash uh, to shareholders. Thanks, Madhu, and all the best for future. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you. Next question is from Vijit Jain of City. Vijit, you may please ask your question. Yeah, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, hi. hi thanks, Madhur. So, Madhur, my first question is, uh, so aside from the impact uh, on your UPI market share, which we can see in the data, uh, can you talk about overall, you know, the recovery trajectory that you're seeing across merchant categories in general in GMV terms? So online, in-app, offline, online, off-app, and also on a slightly different vector, if you can talk about enterprise and SME merchants. Yeah. So um, if you uh, – let's just go to the slide where we had uh, uh, GMV uh, trends. Uh, so if you see, um, uh, like we mentioned, uh, there's clearly an impact of disrupted – there's an impact of uh, – sorry, I'm just going to get to that slide. Just give me a second. Sorry, here you go. Um, so clearly uh, there's an impact of 12% from uh, disrupted, um, disrupted uh, uh, instruments. And uh, uh, so, so that's 12%. Overall, uh, like we said, we are down about 6 or 7% from January. Um, now, if we further break that up into consumer, consum consumers and merchants, and just to calibrate everyone, when we say consumers, we mean transactions that happen on the Paytm app, which is, which is uh, for the most, of, most part of it, uh, bill payments, as well as some of the commerce categories that are on the PDM app. And the merchant side uh, is all the offline merchants where we help merchants accept payments, um, as well as uh, uh, on the online merchants. So that business, if you can see from this chart um, widget, um, has been significantly less impacted to begin with, and has stabilized earlier. So even as the consumer side, because of MTUs, was declining, this stabilized here, and then it had gone up here. In terms of the cut, uh, further cut of this against online enterprise and uh, uh, and what we call sort of uh, soundbox merchants or QR merchants, um, I think EDC, which is card machines, was the fastest to recover uh, and is actually higher than January levels. Um, and online was slightly online and semi-organized was slightly slower and semi-organized especially because we had to do the migration to partner bank uh, and obviously that's a very large base of merchants uh, so to be able to communicate to all of them all at the same time uh, that there's no reason to be worried we will be able to offer you continuity of service uh, is more challenging uh, so we saw that impact to be a little bit longer um, but that has uh, started to come back very meaningfully as well. So there isn't a huge difference between the three merchant categories as I described them, which is organized offline, kind of semi-organized and unorganized offline, and the third being online. There isn't a huge difference, but um, there, was, uh, there was earlier and more recovery in the organized offline market. Got it. Thanks, Madhu. Madhu, my second question is... Um... You know, uh, just looking at the 1Q guidance that, you, uh, that you've that you provided, and thanks for providing that. Um, so if I look at the EBITDA guidance uh, for 400 to 500 crores of losses, seems to suggest uh, you will have maybe somewhere around 40% contribution margins uh, with, you know, whatever fixed cost structure you have. Uh, so I'm just wondering uh, if you could, uh, you know, uh, walk us through how you get from 40 to back to 50% contribution margins, which is also your medium term guide here. Um, and, and is there, are there uh, specific one-offs in this 1Q guidance, or is it all to do with the scale uh, that you are hitting in 1Q? Um, uh, so, which is our indirect cost space is about 1,200 crores. Right. Um, so if you, if you do that math in the 15 to 16, and of course we're working with ranges here, 
Um, we don't expect uh, contribution margin to go down to 40%. Um, I would say that excluding UPI incentive, which for simplification purpose, let's just say is Q1, Q2, and Q3 of every year, and Q4, um, then you get the UPI incentive and then you have an annual number. Um, excluding UPI incentive, we might be in the high 40s to 50%. And including UPI incentive uh, for the full year, we would be a few points north of that. So that's sort of the general direction of the business right now. Of course, there are a few moving parts, particularly the unpausing and the ramping up of like, some high margin businesses. Um, uh, so, so we might be off by a couple of points here and there. Um, so that's uh, where our broad uh, business is that day. Um, with respect to your uh, to the second part of your question, uh, with respect, um, I, I wouldn't say one-offs. I would say that, like we mentioned, uh, that there are certain pieces of business uh, which are at different levels of recovery path, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, so for example, the user side of the business, just the MTU base, has stabilized, but the growth of that uh, depends on new onboard, uh, new user onboarding. Um, the merchant side of business is slightly more under our control in the sense that we are doing enormous amount of reactivation efforts, uh, especially through the 10 lakh odd merchants uh, who went inactive, uh, and we are adding new merchants as well. So that recovery is a little bit sharper, and we would sh we'll start to see that even in Q1, let alone, uh, and obviously in Q2 and Q3 as well. Um, so I, so I, would, I would call them sort of temporary impacts with different, slightly different recovery paths, um, back to the original trend lines, as opposed to necessarily um, one-off items. Got it. Last question, if I can just sandwich that in. Um, the merchant loans is obviously recovered uh, pretty uh, well, right? You're almost back to where you were in January on that. Uh, now, uh, is that, and, and you mentioned that as well, Madhu, when you spoke uh, just now. Uh, so, suffice to say, greater confidence in continuing to ramp this as per original plans uh, going forward from here, whereas consumer loans, obviously, uh, because the product has changed quite a bit, uh, is a little bit slower growth. Uh, that's how one should look at it. And within consumer loans, if you can talk about, you know, how much of uh, the April run rate is, uh, you know, these uh, very high ticket uh, loans of, you know, the ones that you launched in December quarter? Yeah. So, um, on the first part of the question, um, on the mer merchant loan where we are doing corrections, which is vast majority, uh, vast, vast majority of the merchant loan number that you see here, which is 971 crores in, uh, in April, um, I would say, yes, there has been significant rec recovery nearly back uh, to the January numbers. Um, but we I should add that we are any, the reason why we make this distinction between collection and distribution only is because we do take up, you know, this task of doing the collection. We also take up uh, some sort of uh, uh, sync up obligation with the lenders uh, that a collection should be effective. Hence, if we are finding any concerns, either as a macro or in our base, on potential asset quality deterioration, we take a very, very conservative view it, to the extent of working with lending partners to slow down dispersers or to get much more targeted and so on. Um, so even in the merchant-owned business, uh, while there is this ramp up and significant momentum and tailwinds, uh, we are going to be very focused on signs of asset quality deterioration. Um, so I don't want to create an expectation that, you know, we will very soon be doing numbers much, you know, the same as before or much larger than before just because of the momentum that we're seeing over the last two or three months uh, because that the, our most important metric is whether our lending partners are seeing any kind of asset quality deterioration on businesses where we are doing collections, right? Um, so I would say just a little bit off, uh, wait and watch and give us some time to just make sure that, and there, oh, there could also potentially be some signals of, hey, there's some latent demand here, because when we don't do business in February, then there might be a little bit more to do in March and April. Um, so we are, we, are, we are very focused on this business. It is core to us. 
Uh, it has performed very, very well for us in the past, but we are not going to sort of just extrapolate uh, mindlessly. Um, on the new type of zones where we do not collect and only get distribution fees, that's a very small part of the business in the last three months. Uh, they're encouraging in terms of having done a lot of the upfront work and the partner interest uh, in scaling this up, but I think for now you could call it a pilot. Did I miss one of the one of your sub questions, uh, Richard? Uh, no, thank you, Mother. That's about it. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Rahul Jain of Dolat Capital. Rahul, you may please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, Hope I'm audible. Yeah, Rahul. Yeah, Rahul. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, a part of my uh, question was uh, answered. Uh, uh, but just trying to attempt it in a different way. Uh, our guidance kind of suggests that our cost on an absolute basis would be stable. Is it simply coming because of uh, lower uh, net payment margin or there is more to uh, more built into that to come to that number or it's more, simply more conservative uh, to begin with? Uh, Rahul, I think it's a couple of things. Uh, one thing I should point out is that in Q4, our marketing spend was roughly half of what we spent per quarter. Um, and that was deliberate because in February and March, we want to make sure that transitions are completed um, as opposed to really focusing on uh, specific user campaigns, right? Um, so we do expect in Q1, our marketing cost to be higher than Q4. Uh, because now we are uh, seeing, and you see, saw some of the ads hopefully at the beginning of the call, uh, these ads that I think we have launched or about to launch, which I can tell me. Um, so this, this is really just straight from the oven, and we're going out with that. Um, so we will spend more on marketing. Q4 was abnormally low. So there is that one impact, and I think we've mentioned that in the earnings release. But it will be partially offset on indirect cost side, uh, by some of the people cost uh, actions that we have taken in the past um, and uh, the, the sort of expectations that we have created here of 400 to 500 crores of annual people cost savings. Um, so, but that takes a little bit of time to come through fully in the financial numbers, so we will not see all of that in Q1. Right, right. Uh and, uh, you know, a uh, question uh, uh, for Vijay, uh, while, you know, we have uh, closed down some businesses like uh, Postpaid, given the way the discomfort on possibility on converting into cash or any other factor, uh, but do we see a possibility of recreating this product as distributor or manufacturer in a way that better aligns with the comfort zone of the norms? Uh, first of all, BNPL was not uh, against the norm, which means that we could potentially bring it back how it was, number one. And secondly, there is an opportunity of uh, Crideline on UPI, which is very edges into this. So, yes, there are two opportunities. So, uh, so in one of your comments so we where... It, we, we paused it because small ticket loans were going through extraordinary delinquencies. Right, right. And in your comment uh, in the press release, uh, you mentioned that uh, that happy to share some of these products have been restarted and they are more in the process of starting soon. So you're trying to indicate uh, products even as far as like wallet or postpaid, or those could be a little more uh, into future. Um, this is a because most of the products are in partnership with other. Uh, financial services organization, including postpaid, including wallet now, if you notice. So a lot depends on technology comfort, scale comfort, then piloting starting. So that is why I've said, and literally everything is on the table. We, we need yeah. to start fast tech distribution, as you might have seen. Yeah, I completely understand the way a lot of things have happened, but I think importantly, like one uh, new uh, new product launch we did on the device side, but newer uh, product has to be the key instrument to uh, reimagine the time 
uh, which we always was offering. And if some of these product don't exist, then the TAM has to get redefined uh, back to the similar or higher size with newer launches. So we're happy to hear more inputs on that in the time to come. Absolutely, Raul, you're correct. And you have pointed out towards the product that will be our attention and uh, much less of our attention. It is definitely dependent on our partners, their markets, uh, response, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so we will do what our partners are interested in. Our technology and distribution becomes our mode. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Gaurav Singhal. Gaurav, you may please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. So I wanted to understand your view on, on break-even. Given that next quarter, from what I understand, uh, is expected to be like a bottom, a 500-600 crore loss, uh, and then improvement from there on. But if I just look at the various moving parts here, I mean, the payment, net payment revenue, now it seems it's structurally low, lower. And then on the lending side also, you mentioned um, you're not going to scale it up aggressively uh, from the April number that you have disclosed. So so maybe that's also more gradual scale up. And then marketing and, and other uh, is probably more, I guess, trend in line with GMB. So if we put all of this together, it seems uh, there is not a lot of path. Uh, near term for break even, but I'm I'm wondering if you have a different view, or if you feel like in four or five quarters um, you do see things coming to break even again, and then if yes, what kind of path do you have in mind? Uh, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, this is Madhur. Maybe I'll take your question. Um, so I think uh, there are various drivers, right, uh, for our business. So one is uh, on the payment side itself. Um, we are seeing, as you saw, GMB recovering, and obviously GMB has a direct uh, impact on um, on margins, um, payment processing margin, uh, the payment processing money that we can uh, get, right, in absolute uh, rupee and dollar terms. Uh, so that's the first one. Second is, as we mentioned, um, uh, the the sort of, if you will, a little spike in the inactive merchants, which we are now fixing and correcting and reactivating. Uh, does result in additional subscription revenue, uh, which is uh, which effectively goes straight down to the bottom line, um, or at least to the EBITDA line. Uh, so that is a very positive uh, contributor going forward. On financial services, I think uh, they're very interesting conversation for us to have with our lending partners now that the payment business has stabilized, as we have said uh, the presentation. I think those conversations were, quite frankly, a little bit harder in February and March uh, than they are now, uh, especially uh, now we are sort of public with all of these numbers. Um, so I think those conversations are a lot easier to have now than, than, than they were in February and March. Uh, I think it's hard to be very, very specific about, uh, you know, which one of these line items will, uh, you know, do better than expected and which ones may not do um, uh, may, may not grow, uh, you know, so very significantly from here. Um, what I was coming to do, Widget, was just our basic approach to be conservative. We are not seeing issues in asset quality in merchant loans, but I also wanted to be calibrated about creating an expectation that that would automatically translate into us, you know, dramatically growing the business. But there are opportunities in lending, uh, both in the distribution only model than personal loans as well as uh, scaling of merchant loans, both with collections and without collections, and the pilots that we have in secured lending. In addition, uh, insurance and wealth can become positive contributors uh, going forward. These businesses are not quite of the scale of our lending business right now, uh, obviously, but uh, there is incremental money to be made. And on, on our commerce and cloud businesses, I do think we can do a lot more about uh, being sharper, about getting slightly greater monetization per MTU or engaged customer uh, than we currently do. And finally, on the cost side, while, like I mentioned, in Q1, we'll spend more on user growth than we did in Q4 because Q4 was abnormally lower, um, we are very focused on making sure uh, that we are lean as an organization uh, and that we have a lot of discipline on cost. Uh, so across the platform, uh, there are many, many opportunities. 
I think uh, we did sit down and think about whether this is the time for us to give slightly longer term guidance beyond Q1. And we thought that as we are having these discussions with partners as well as internal conversations about where the next 100, 200, 500 crores of bottom line is going to come from uh, and over what time period, we thought it's better to wait. Uh, we should give the Q1 guidance, but uh, it is better to wait uh, until at least July, if not a bit longer, uh, to be a little bit more specific about when exactly we, we get to EBITDA break even. Well, um, I, uh, thanks a lot. That's, that, that's very helpful. And then the other question I had was on this, uh, adding MPUs. So you mentioned uh, you would be discussing with NPCI, uh, which I think was one of the points that RBI mentioned. But then the other point was also uh, to finish migration of all the existing users, existing UPI users. So has that been completed? And is the discussion with NPI, uh, NPCI the only outstanding point or, or is something else left to, keep, to start adding uh, details? Uh, I think uh, as a migration, logically the migration was of the system and technology because as a consumer, as you can guess, uh, let's say we have X million customers only a fraction of them come and not every one of them will effectively come in the lifetime to get migrated. So we can, and we do the migration of these customers as and when they come on the app. So we are very actively converting them and migrating them. As of any other concerns or inputs, we are in active con con conversations with NPCI and they're very supportive. And uh, we are hopeful that they should give us this in due course. If they get fewer feedbacks, we solve them. Got it. And so just one last thing. So on this UPI, you mentioned the bank-to-bank -bank UPI is the one which uh, does not which does not have any monetization apart from the incentive. How much is that as percentage of the total UPI GMV for us, roughly? I think the intention is to say when you pay from a bank account, which is the primary way of making a payment on UPI, the other payment instruments like credit, credit card, overdraft, prepaid are very minuscule, not even 10%. I'd rather say the mm -hmm. few single percent. Mm -hmm. so, so if I may just add, out of, the, out of the about annualized 20 lakh odd crores, we have said 80 to 85% is UPI of which is very small percentage of non-bank-to-bank -bank thing, vast majority of that 80 to 85% is bank. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will extend the call for another 10 minutes because there are a few questions. Uh, we'll take next question from Jayant of Jeffries. Jayant, you may please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first one is to Vijay, uh, about this 400 to 500 crore of finalized people cost savings. Uh, how are you thinking? Can you help us uh, understand the journey of these savings? It's almost 15% of your current uh, employee cost base. And how would this play out between the field force uh, versus the HO? We saw you had almost a half thousand uh, uh, reduction in the count of uh, sales employees. So if you could just help uh, understand the journey of these savings, uh, how will this play out? So first and foremost, uh, I want to tell you, Jen, that we will continue to add more sales executives. And this turn of sales executive, if at all, is due to that there was uncertainty, what kind of product that we should sell, when we are migrated, other banks have started, and so on. So instead of retaining, we let them continue to churn and not bother about them. But I want you to know that we will increase that overall number, and we are committed to grow our merchant side ecosystem by adding more sales number of people. As for overall cost, there is a clarity of number of product and technology and operation side. There is a tremendous amount of scope available, so we are able to uh, add that. I mean, very simple customer care is, merchant care is, the systems and people and operations where, let's say, Excel sheets move instead of the system could get modified. So a lot of space of cutting that kind of slack. It's, so it's majorly no from non-field areas. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We will definitely increase the number of people in field area. It will be, I mean, given a given our attention and direction, our machines are uh, chugging along well, and in terms like they're working smoothly with our partner bank, we will continue to increase the number of salespeople that we look at on that side. 
and the device deployment rate you you expect that to go back to uh, i mean maybe not one and a half million but but uh, maybe at some level of that not not what we have seen currently well jant i can tell that i expect this daily and uh, i'm happy to tell you that some of our numbers are actually very very much going towards the previous numbers soon oh great great that that's great to hear vijay a second one is from madhur uh, on on the margins on lending business if you could help us understand uh, there was an element of collection expenses as well right which used to be a, a, a part i think of the uh, other contribution expenses so if you could help us understand the margins on lending products uh, where you do collections and where you don't do collections uh, how how was that before and and now that you're seeing more of these non collection products how how will the margins on the lending business play out um so jen on the ebit uh, let's say contribution margin basis or ebitda margin basis because some of this is people cost um the margins for similar size loans are not that different uh whether it is with collections or without um obviously with collections also means that some of the collection revenues and collection incentives are um are slightly back ended um so there might be a little bit of a timing issue there but on a uh bottom line basis they're not particularly different it is possible that um some of the higher ticket loans might be to even more prime customers or if it's higher ticket then the you know take rate might be slightly lower uh, the average uh, take rate of distribution only loans is uh, slightly higher than um uh the loans that we do with collections uh so there could be those elements as well but like for like uh, the bottom line is not very different thank you thanks thank you sir thank you next question is from saurabh kumar of jpm uh, saurabh you may please go ahead uh hi thanks for that uh so just two questions one on uh, slide 6 you basically say that the average uh, you know uh, the per device subscription revenue uh which is 90 will go down to 80 and then recover back to 100 uh i'm wondering what is driving that it is just that you expect a more fall off in q1 uh, so is it just the active rate which you is basically declining in q1 and going back to q4 or is there something else uh, you know some discounts which you're giving which probably come out so that's one and the second is again on the indirect cost basis whatever you kind of guide it to will it be fair to say that your full year indirect cost should be in the 4500 crore dot range these are the two questions thank you yeah so on the first question uh, it is purely kind of the full quarter impact of how we have exited q4 sort of so obviously january was basis normal active uh, active rates or inactive rates um and then february and in march we saw this 10 lakh drop so we have exited q4 um slightly uh, what well, uh, 10 lakhs worse if you will uh than our normal active rates would suggest uh in q2 we do see see sorry in q1 we do see recovery in those active rates and early signs of positive but um it is because you exited weaker that uh, for the overall quarter uh, there is slightly the subscription revenue so we have, so to clarify we're not seeing deterioration in q1 but we are seeing in q1 the full quarter impact of the deterioration we saw in q4 um on the second yeah, so point, just a percentage active rate change is what is driving this uh, thing. okay okay right. um and uh, and also the fact that uh, we could not add new uh, merchants for a portion of Feb- well, all of february and portion of march uh, and we are adding new merchants now uh, so those merchants are obviously uh, active and early activation active rates are quite high um and to your second question i think give or take 5% uh, sort of range uh, that probably sounds right okay thank you i I, sh- i should mention that uh, uh while i think to get to that number you have taken out 4 to 500 crores of savings that you mentioned yeah. um the marketing number would vary a little bit um depending on what actions we are taking in q2 q3 q4 like i said uh, last year we did spend about 100 150 less um than what we expected to because of the february and march impact okay thank you thank you uh, next question and the last question is from piran engineer of clsm piran you may please go ahead 
Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my question. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just firstly, uh, if you can just comment on how many lending partners are active with you as on date. And uh, uh, in this sourcing only model, is there some sort of FLDG agreement or any sort of that, that sort of stuff? Because there's a lot of media speculation around it. So I just want to clarify this. Yeah, but um, none, none, none of the lending partner has terminated any agreement with us. So practically, depending on disbursement rate, yes, no, maybe, and so on. So everybody is on. As for FNDG, we have not given or don't plan to. We don't see, we rather would go in disbursement only model, like we are talking, as you can see. And as for media report, we did file a stock exchange clarification next day, so hopefully that clarifies. Uh, but Vijay, just to be fair, this 2,000 crores of disbursements you all did in April, that has come from all seven partners. Have all seven contributed or is it some are dormant, some are... Because at least one partner is public about ha, wanting ha, to reduce so, the share to zero. Yes. So not every partner is active or dispersing. Well. So, and, and hence my question, can you give a sense of how many are active with you? Again, this is more about the comfort, like I told you, Piran, that which state of business stability are we at. That is what different different partners. So we already have enough and ample supply of capital, as you can guess. We are doing these numbers as you are seeing them. So we rather are trying to find out for disbursement of, in a merchant site, as you can see, the numbers are showed up and we are expanding on that but to, but up to a particular level. But we are more focused on disbursement-led partners, which could be many more different kind of partners than the same partners as before. So the approach here is not necessarily to go to the same partner for the same product, if you notice. Okay. Got because it. we are not doing BNPL and uh, personal loan with collection, so we may not need to necessarily seek that partnership. And Pran, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just add one other thing, which is that um, while uh, we have had uh, the disruptions that we have had in February and March, and the pausing of business and unpausing of some of those already and unpausing hopefully more later. I think you also have to keep in mind the overall context of the market where partners who are doing lending with uh, players like us also have different views about uh, what their approach should be given the overall market backdrop, right? And we have always worked with our partners on the basis of you should only lend to people that you're comfortable lending to because we don't give you FLDGs. Right. So partners will take certain views from time to time, uh, which is why we have been talking about how many partners we have and, the, and our desire and focus to increase those number of partners because we don't control partner decisions, nor do we influence partner decisions, nor do we try to catalyze partner decisions by giving FLDGs. Got it. Okay, that's clear. Uh, just a couple of clarification questions, if I heard them correctly. Uh, did you mention that the UPI incentive sharing with the new bank partners will be similar to what you had with Paytm Payments Bank? Our overall commercials are similar. Some of the nuances of arrangements might be different. Because okay. remember, remember, in, Pay in the case of Paytm Payments Bank, uh, Paytm Payments Bank was running UPI. Uh, it was hosted on Paytm app for customers, and we were also a, a merchant acquirer for Paytm Payments Bank, right? Um, our model going forward as TPAP is different, right? So uh, the arrangements that a TPAP would enter into with a partner bank, a sponsor bank would be slightly different uh, than the arrangements that we had in the past, but the commercial impact to us is uh, roughly the same. Okay, that, that clarifies. And secondly, could you just uh, explain this thing on, on the previous participant's question? The subscription uh, device rental is different for active and inactive merchants. Is, is that oh, sorry, how it works? Sorry. No, sorry, that was in the clarification. So it may be, if I understood the question correctly and the way I explained it, is that um, I think the question was, do you, you have said 90 will go to 80, does yeah. that mean that you are seeing deterioration in ARPU per customer in Q1? And the point that I was making is that we saw deterioration in ARPU per, per customer in Q4, especially yeah. on account of the inactive uh, base going up by 10 lakhs, like we have described. So we have exited March 
with that state of play and why we actually expect recovery of that, not full recovery, but partial recovery of that in Q1. So we expect Q1 momentum to be upwards, whereas Q4 momentum in the last two months goes downwards. Um, but as you think about what your weighted average ARPU per device would be in Q1 versus Q4, that will be downwards because you exited Q4 week. No, I, I got that, Madhur. So it basically means that an inactive merchant pays you lower rent than an active merchant, right? An, inact an inactive merchant actually does not pay us rent because we deduct from their their um, their settlement. Of course, we have other ways of sending a salesperson to go collect subscription fees and so on, but that is significantly harder, right? So an active um, uh the surest sign of being able to, the surest way of being able to earn subscription from a merchant is if to they're do active. transactions. If okay. they're active, Understood. exactly. Because if they do one or two transactions, um, even one or two transactions a month, obviously merchants, some box merchants do many, many, many more than that on an average. But if a merchant goes inactive for whatever reason, then it is significantly harder to collect. And obviously then we use remote reactivation efforts and then on-field reactivation efforts. Um, and those activation efforts take a little bit of time to kick in on a base of 10 packs. Okay, okay, now I understood. Got it, got it. Thanks for the clarification, guys, and all the best. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, Pran. Thank you. Uh, with that, we come to an end of this call. A replay of earnings call and a transcript will be made available on the company website subsequently. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah.